listeners of Radio Zindagi. I am Sonia, the show host for Silicon Dreams and also the founder of Orbis 86. And with me today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Lakshmi Prathuri. Lakshmi is a name that honestly doesn't need a lot of introduction. She is the founder of Ink Talks in India. And the work that she has done over the past couple of decades is nothing short of amazing. Lakshmi, great reverence to you because we are from India. And in India, especially when your journey started, at that time, women were still in a place where they didn't have a lot of power. Right. And you tried to bring power to not just the disenfranchised women in the society, but you gave everyone a power to speak. Mm -hmm. so I would love to ask you, how did this journey for Intox start? I think, you know, every journey starts many, many, many years before it actually starts. And for me, when I left India, I was kind of a bit frustrated. I felt that people were asking me too many questions, like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why are you so different? And all these kinds of stuff. So I felt I just want to leave. But it, luckily, I landed in Portland, Oregon where I was welcomed, I went to a great school and I had a very nurturing environment where people didn't question why I'm different, they celebrated the fact that I was different. So I think things happened at the right time for me. So before I got jaded or upset, I went to a place where I felt celebrated and I could do my MBA while doing a, a you know minor in theater and also creative writing. So I could dabble in many things. And later on in my career, I felt I benefited as much from my theater classes and creative writing classes as I did from my business classes. So I felt that it's extremely important to have people be exposed to an interdisciplinary approach. Mm -hmm. So innovation really happens when you have access to interdisciplinary people and you have the ability to take the risk to fail. And also you have a tribe of very complementary skill sets that can support you. It doesn't happen on its own. So I became very obsessed with how do we create a platform for innovation where things can happen automatically without me connecting them to people or anything of that sort. Because I've been like a lifelong collector and connector. I love collecting people. I love connecting them to each other. But that's my effectiveness is only as long as my ability and my time. But I felt that if we could inspire many others to connect with each other, a lot of things could happen. So that was a genesis of INC. In INC stands for innovation and knowledge. But really, it's about inking our future together. Mm -hmm. How do we all write our future together instead of being passive? recipients of the life how can we how can we be active designers of our future so that sort of was the beginning of it Lakshmi you have so nicely articulated whatever I wanted to ask you I mean you know it's it it was just amazing nothing short of amazing I'm actually short of words but here's the thing I think you focused very well on the the opportunities that people could get and as you said you were thankfully in a good place where before you lost all hope, yeah. you found a tribe that celebrates Correct, you. Yeah. Right. And as humans, if we were all the same, it would be so boring. Exactly. There are unfortunately a lot of disenfranchised communities and demographics mm -hmm. that do not get access to opportunities. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't even know what is the path to get to these opportunities. Mm -hmm. So innovation and knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. As a platform, how does it help people mm -hmm. A, create a bridge to these opportunities and B, discover their tribe? See, I think for any journey, first there has to be the intention to go on that journey and then where to find the tribe. So what we try to do through our stories is, first of all, can we inspire people to want to be the best versions of themselves mm -hmm. because we are programmed in our lives to be same you know don't deviate from anything and all that kind of stuff whether it's our education system or our society wants to keep us within a certain uh, circle it, it's not just poor people it's sometimes being very rich is also 
you know debilitating because i belong to such and such family so i cannot study i cannot do this yeah. i can't marry somebody different We you know all these kinds of, of things monarchies for example right yeah. that are bound by their own boundaries sure so it's the key is to unlock the human potential from within mm -hmm. if you can inspire someone to discover the wonder of learning about yourself forget learning about anything else how can i learn about myself so i can imagine a future for me that could be very different than what's been laid out for me so we felt that if we collected these amazing stories taught people how to tell their stories in a very short time put all those stories out there have them listen to you know have them be out there so millions of people can hear you never know which talk may touch who to do what so the first thing is you put stuff out there mm -hmm. uh, so people are inspired the second thing is when we do the conference every year like 5 600 people come together and now this is a tribe now this is a tribe now who is committed to it mm -hmm. they are willing to pay into it so they, because they have to pay an admission fee to come there they have to travel there they have to stay there now you have to make a little bit of commitment to say i think i will learn more when i come here so out of the 100 million people who saw our talks about 500 people come on a regular basis now out of this 500 people about 30 40 people will step up and say i'm actually going to support some of these ideas so you can if you want to create change in this world you have to first create funnels yeah and say what is it i'm willing to give away so that everybody has the basic level of inspiration and then what can i do which is sustainable that means people pay into it that's sustainable where they can learn that skill and then how do i have a business plan that's profitable that allows people to reach their destination so that's sort of what we do while our talks are free our conference pays for all these talks being Absolutely. free and the few projects we do with a handful of people for something really deep and long really gives us the ability to be successful be it teaching a whole bunch of people in a corporation how to tell their stories be it teaching a bunch of people how to write scripts you know anything we engage with corporations you know takes care of actually uh, you know being able to do many many more such things lakshmi i feel like you have touched upon a very important point here i know folks a lot of us are passionate about creating an impact and many a times a lot of entrepreneurs they try to get into the social impact space and what the, their first intuition or you know their first step is thinking that they should go and register a non-profit but non-profits i feel they have their own set of challenges mm -hmm. and what you very well touched upon was the fact that you need to have a sustainable business plan in place because even if it's running a non-profit we know yeah. that the biggest non-profits a lot of their costs go into administrative fees because it's not sure. easy doing that So for social enterprises the structure that you suggested right that hey you open up a portion of whatever you're working on for people to consume but then you also connect with a group of people who could actually pay you for some of the services that you offer and also i think both the non-profit and for-profit have a place we have a foundation as well so basically it does the groundwork that's foundational for everyone right. that can be free for everyone Right. you know and so getting you know convincing foundations and csr of the world to give you is also very important the way yeah. we look at our foundation is that it's a, it's a incubator right so any new idea comes there first you have to convince a bunch of people to give that money and make it a success so it becomes self sustaining right and then you say ah now it's time to spin it out now you have to go find your customers and all that kind of stuff so i think you know business structures are means to an end they're right. not an end in itself right. so first you say what do i want to do and say which part of it will be served by a non profit structure right which part of it will be served by a for profit structure and then go do that and that's sort of what we have done and it's not like it's a strategy we had from the beginning it's just from the beginning we said we'll have a for profit and a non profit and we'll figure out which one will make sense where and we made some mistakes and we learned learn and then you it. you go from there but to having that idea from the beginning that whatever we do must have 
of for-profit and the non-profit aspect to see what's valid, you know, in a, in a very unscripted way served us better. We didn't have it that way. So, I mean, having a 10-year-old non-profit activity today helps us to get yes. grants, even when we do new programs, unlike just incorporating it now after 10 years. Lakshmi, now you have been on both sides of the world, right? You do a lot of work in India as well, and you are exposed to the various, like not just Pacific Northwest, but also the Bay Area, right? Yeah. We are coming live here from PyCon 2023 at the Santa Clara Convention Center from the Bay Area. So for listeners of Radio Zindagi, again, the Southeast Asian community, which is which has a huge presence in the US, but also in India, in your journey, have you seen things change in India mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. And how do you think can new entrepreneurs who want to step up, especially being in India? In the past, the journey was come to the Bay Area, Correct, right? Yeah. If you want to launch your idea. Mm -hmm. Coming to the Bay Area is not as easy as it was in the 90s. It was difficult for us even in 2000s to get here. Yeah. There are entrepreneurs who are based in mm -hmm. India, for example, mm -hmm. right? And who still have a global audience. What would your recommendation be to them? I think today, more than any other time, because of social media, because of access of the internet, etc., many, many stories are getting out. But the, the flip side of that is none of these stories have the history of that. So all you see is, oh my God, there's 500 entrepreneurs that got a million dollars each in the Bay Area. You don't understand that there were 100,000 people who started yes. and 5,000 people got 5% of what they wanted and only 5% of them are going to be successful. Yeah. And so we talk I think about the, overnight success is never being overnight. Correct. Right? correct. And I always making. say like an overnight success is at least a two decade long night. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's you got to remember that you have to start with something you're passionate about before it has happened. Right. You know, and I mean, you can jump on the bandwagon when it has happened also, but that's a very different journey. If you want to make a difference, if you want to make an impact, you have to have the stomach to stay with it a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's not all rosy. I mean, we've been through times where we didn't know how the next paycheck is going to come right. from. And even now sitting here, I can't say for the next five years, we can run it with no problem. Because we just don't know. Uh, you know, we are expecting a lot of businesses to come. Whether it comes or not, you don't know. So I think it's extremely important to plan things for what you can be committed to and be committed to it at least for a decade right. because otherwise things won't st uh, stick. So I think be clear what you want, stick to it for a long time and within that time, keep changing your your uh, the, the way you're getting there. See, for us, we always keep said devoting. it's about telling India stories. But how we tell them? Right. Do we tell them through the conference or in a high school or here or there? You got to keep trying different things. You can't stick to something and say, I will never change it. So you have to reincarnate within the same life many, many times. I love that you just spoke about pivoting and reincarnation because my next question was actually going to be that that with the advancements in technology now, this year has been the year about generative AI. Last year, we were talking about decentralizing everything, right? From right, processes yeah. to decentralized knowledge repositories to decentralized finance. So with the advancement in technology, how do you see Inc. shaping up or how would Inc. be pivoting or you know what new strategies Inc. would be adopting mm -hmm. over the next five years? See, when Inc. started, we focused only on, you know, like say 25 to 55 crowd or 35 plus crowd or so. Now we are actually in the process of designing something for high school kids. I and know. how do you start conversations around leadership much, much earlier? Because our goal is to build game changers to be responsible leaders, conscious leaders. So how do you instill that? It's not the quantity of your success, but the quality of your success matters. Yes, you built a billion dollar company. Did you build it by walking over everybody else with unhappy customers where your health is terrible and, uh, you know, you're on drugs now? I mean, then it's not a success. Yeah. So even if you build a $10 million company where you're taking everybody along, where your employees are healthy, you're healthy, it's much more important. So I think we talk about soft skills a lot, I think. 
And today in the world of generative AI, our rush towards singularity and all these things we talk about, we need to e remember even more than ever that technology is a great tool. Right. It's not an end in itself. Yeah. So you have to make sure is the technology being used correctly? Is the data being collected uh, you know, like in a ethical more inclusive use. way. Are we using, I mean, uh, data in an ethical way? Uh, wh what are the privacy concerns we should think about? And especially today, you can anybody you can take anybody's face and you know modify it. Yes. Yeah, you know, you can make them say anything. What is your responsibility? Yeah. You know, it's much beyond freedom of speech or anything of that sort. It's really we need to think of freedom of thought. Right. You know, can we be not shackled by, uh, you know, I don't like that guy, so I'll bring him down. You know, that sort of a thinking. We live in an abundant world where everybody can be successful. And we have you different know? thoughts, notions, agree yeah. to disagree, as we say. Yeah. Right? So the key is, but I, I, I just want to say, more important now than ever before, that the technologists, the behavioral scientists, the social scientists, and the communicators, the marketing people should come together mm -hmm. and make sure we are, um, you know, using the technology in a right way to actually build a better world. I mean, we have spent, you know, 200 years convincing somebody, if you don't use this toothpaste, you're ugly and make them feel ugly. If we can use the same creative power to make someone believe in that they can end hung hunger or they can help others or so, we would be in a great world. Uh, yeah. So I think today, I, I just want to leave with, I want to talk about the most important word today is and. It's not or. You know, we usually say, oh, I'll do this job or that, that or this, you know, either you're successful or I'm successful. It's not that. It's an and world. So the biggest shift we have, I think, is 10 years ago, we did everything ourselves because people didn't understand that attention to quality we wanted to have, you know, attention to detail on timing. If it's a three minute talk, it's a three minute talk, right. you know, those kinds of disciplines. So we stuck to doing everything ourselves. Now we are looking at partnerships in a very different way. So can we create 10 ideas where we do only one piece of it? Someone who's really good at it can do the other pieces. So I think collaboration is the key word for uh, us to really take advantage of technology right. and you need a younger person that questions your set beliefs you need a technology person to make you understand how your art can be in better places you need an artist who makes you design your website better so i think we are in a very collaborative world nice collaborate well equals it's not like i'm hiring you so i'll tell you what to do i have to listen to you if you if you are the design person and you're telling me this is how it should be done I have to listen to you. So right. you have to listen very differently. It's collaboration as equals, not collaboration as for hire. And that's the world we are entering. And that's where we are changing very drastically, dramatically, radically. Uh, the way we are doing the conference this year, I'm not curating everything. We are getting co-hosts and we are having each of them curate a space. So you have to collaborate a lot more and trust the others to do their thing. Well, Lakshmi, it was wonderful chatting with Thank you. Thank you. And guys, I hope you're as inspired by Lakshmi Prathuri as a lot of us here are. Um, again, thank you, everyone. This was Radio Zindagi. So, so my, my call to action to all of you is, yes, please, please go to inktalks.com, listen to stories. All you need to do is listen and make a comment. It changes that person's life. You know, really listen to what someone has to say. And secondly, learn how to tell your story with a lot of pride, with a lot of humility. Absolutely, guys. You know, that was an amazing call to action. If you haven't yet visited Ink Talks, please go ahead and check the stories that have come there over an entire decade. And we have decades worth of stories to come. We all are human beings. We are social animals. Yes. And finally, we are now moving from changing that C that stood for conglomerates to competition to C for collaboration and building yes. community enterprises. And Inc. is leading by example. So please go ahead and check that out. And Lakshmi, thank you again. Thank you.
for being a part of Radio Zindagi and the Silicon Dream. Thank you very much.